I'm sorry. I was wrong yesterday. Please forgive me. Also, your system is not going to forgive you for playing Hogwarts Legacy because this is going to destroy it. And AMD wants you to forgive them for breaking the Ryzen 7600X. They fixed it. OK, let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the Internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And let's start off today by talking about the top story from yesterday, which was AMD posting that they are going to be releasing their X3D chips on February 14th, also known as Valentine's Day. And it turns out, according to AMD, they were wrong. So just disregard all of that. However, I'll talk about a little bit of it in, in a second. But AMD's official communication about the matter is, as you know, today, AMD.com briefly published a launch date for the Ryzen 7000 X3D series desktop processors. However, that date is incorrect. We have not confirmed a launch date at this time. We will provide updates on the expected availability of these processors at a future date, which seems a little intriguing. They did say that the date is wrong, not that it was mispublished. So that is a good start for us to know where to go from. The reason that I ended up talking about this yesterday and one of the reasons why I thought it was OK to move forward with talking about it on Hot News is that previous indications was that it was around the same time frame in that middle February mark where previous indications were it was February 16th. February 14th was a little bit earlier. AMD published it themselves. It seemed to all be falling into place that we were going to get it right around and then AMD, however, according to the WCCF tech headline has friend zoned us. So we're not going to be getting the X3D chips on that date specifically, whether or not they'll come out beforehand, whether or not they'll come out later remains to be seen. The conspiracy theorist in me and the worry wart in me wants to think that AMD is saying this because the chips aren't ready and they're like, uh, we accidentally published that because that was the original date and we were not going to be able to make that date. So that's why it's a mistake that could obviously be completely unfounded. I also thought that we weren't going to get the X3D chips this early, but AMD says they're coming out in February. We just don't have the specific timeline for it just yet. Let me know when's too early, when's too late. How long are you willing to wait for AMD to get right on into your system? Let me know down below in those comments. And it's not the only leak that's coming out, but this one also an official leak like the AMD one was because the AMD one was on their own gosh dang website. Samsung renders of the Galaxy S23 are starting to show up. These are official marketing renders of the next generation phone from Samsung, as you can see right here. Not a whole lot of detail to them. We don't know price. We don't know specs. Still remains to be seen, but they're going to be having their Galaxy Unpacked event on February 1st. And you can actually reserve one of these for like no cost down or anything like that over on Samsung's website. And they'll give you a $50 Samsung credit if you reserve the Samsung Galaxy phone might be worth taking a look at if you're planning on upgrading it to it anyways. We'll leave a link in the video description for you to check it out in case you want to. But it says reserve new. I guess they're going to have three cameras on the S23. So there you go. Check it out in case you want to. And let's check out crypto stocks because this is the first time in a while I could say what is going on. Bitcoin up 8% on the day. It is just below 19 grand as of the time of filming. Yesterday it was in the $17,000 region. Bitcoin ripping and tearing on through. And Ethereum pulling a similar abracadabra to be at 6.42% increase at 1428. And Dogecoin is not ripping and tearing quite so much to be at 3.89% increase at 8 cents. And Tesla having a, a flat day mostly. It's only up a quarter of a percent. Not a whole lot going on there. But I hope there's a whole lot going on for UFD deals because we should be bringing us the deals. I talked to him yesterday on like a video call. It was nice. I like that guy. Yo, welcome back to UFD deals. We bring the hottest tech deals on the internet. Happy Friday, guys. Hope you guys are stoked for the weekend. I know I am, which is why I'm going to waste no more time and jump straight into today's deals. Starting with the Apple TV 4K second generation, the 64 gig unit is going for only $114.99, which is $84 off and a huge upgrade to your smart home if you're running in the Apple ecosystem. And next up, we have the A-Data XPG Lancer 32 gig kit of DDR5. This 32 gig set is running at 5200 megahertz at CL38 and is going for only $109.99. 99 cents, which is $140 off for such a sleek looking RAM kit. And then lastly, we have something I've actually always wanted. It's an arcade machine from Arcade One Up. The Terminator 2 Arcade is going for only $399.99, which is $300 off. If I had my way, I would have a full lineup of these in my room, but 
I haven't seen them in South Africa at all. And with that, the deals are done for today. So I'll hand you off back to Brad for the rest of hot news. Don't forget, you can find the links to these deals and more in the video description down below. And until next time, cheers. Thanks, Reese. But you're going to like this because you have a PlayStation and you've been waiting for Discord support on the PlayStation 5 for a while. And according to rumors that are coming out, the PlayStation 7.0 firmware update is going to have some big movements happening with it, including finally Discord. But actually, another cool thing is that they're going to be bringing out game streaming for PlayStation 5 games. Currently, if you have their PlayStation Plus premium membership, you can stream, but it's only PlayStation 3 and older games, whereas this new update will bring it so that you can stream the latest games instead of having to download them in case you want to. I don't know who the target market is for this unless it's going to allow you to stream them on your PC, which could be really cool. And that way you don't have to have access to it. You just have to pay for PlayStation Press Premium. We'll have to see how that goes. But also full fledged Discord integration is allegedly going to be coming in this 7.0 update. If, but if you're considering playing a Hogwarts Legacy on a PlayStation 5, then you might be getting better experience than what's going to be happening on PC because we just got a list of the specifications for what you're going to need to run Hogwarts Legacy and much anticipated Harry Potter Potter game that's going to be coming out in February and the, the specs are a lot so in order to play it at 720p 30 you need to have a GTX 960 or 6600 which isn't terrible but recommended specs for a 1080p 60 FPS experience is an i7 8700 with a 1080 Ti a 5700 XT or an Arc A770 so I mean pretty decent specs like a 1060 is not going to do you here for 1080p 60 at high quality settings at ultra you're going to need a 2080 Ti or a 6 6800 XT with a 10700K or a 5800X. And then for 4K Ultra, they're asking for a 10700K or a 5800X with a 3090 tie or a 7900 XT to get 4K 60 on Ultra settings. So obviously you'll be able to tweak it, but it does appear like it, this is very strange because the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One have underpowered hardware compared to some of those specs that they're announcing that you're going to need and will allegedly be able to run this. And it's also coming out to the switch which is i don't know how they're gonna do it the only th thing that like actually gets me excited about it is the fact that they delayed the lesser versions of this game right like they're gonna be releasing the fastest versions first and then they've announced that the switch will come out at the very end it's kind of it's kind of intriguing what's going to be happening, but you might want to consider upgrading to Intel's latest processor. I'm actually, not only was I shocked that AMD announced the X3D chips when they did, I'm now shocked that Intel's dropping the 13900K S so soon. Like they just came out with the 13900K. What was it back in, it was like October, right? We're not even that far away from the launch of their fastest processor ever. And they're dropping the 13900K S, which is the first chip that can achieve six gigahertz without overclocking using Intel's thermal velocity boost. And it's gonna have adaptive boost technology to make it faster for regular gaming. It also has faster RAM support in some benchmarks, as you can see here, if you pair it with really, really fast DDR5 memory, you can get a significant performance upgrade over the 13900K. However, using the same RAM, it's rough the same as the 13900K. You got four FPS more, at least in the 11 game average that hardware and box provided. So it's a really strange chip. Intel saying that's going to cost $699. Uh, Newegg's listing it for $729 right now. You can get the original 13900K for $600. So that's a $100 delta or about a 16% price increase for what's going to be very, very little extra performance. It's only going to be the people who really are always constantly trying to push on the bleeding edge that are going to buy this thing, I think, personally. And it just makes me curious why Intel is launching it right now. Like it's not that big of a performance upgrade and it's only three months after the launch of the 13900K. Like either, either it's one of two things. Intel knows that AMD has nothing good for their X3D chips. And they're like, we release this now so that when AMD talks about their X3D chips, they have to compare it to the KS and they're going to lose. Or it's the other side, which is we are so gosh dang scared of the X3D chips that when they launch, we will no longer have sales. So we have to release it now because otherwise what's going to happen is we will get nothing because AMD is going to beat us. And that's scary. I don't know which one it is. It could potentially be neither of them. I just I find it very strange that three months after launch, they're releasing an update again 
to the fastest CPU. Usually it comes a lot later down the pipeline. Maybe Intel just has new strategies and I'm not aware of it. And AMD's strategy of uh, breaking their chips has been reversed. The 7600X, as I talked about previously in Hot News, had an AGISA firmware update that actually removed one core. So you were down to five cores on specific 7600Xs. AMD worked really hard to remove that firmware update, but now they have issued a new firmware update that no longer has that problem. And you can have all of your cores. You can have six cores out of six instead of five out of six, which as we all know is a allegedly better according according to some people if you want to listen to them i don't know but you guys listen to hot news which confuses me every single day but with that being said i'm done you're done see you on monday